It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. Day 7, Policies and Procedures. There are numerous reasons to put some serious work into your compliance policies and procedures. They are certainly a first line of defense when the government comes knocking. The 2019 guidance made clear that any well-designed compliance program entails policies and procedures that give both the content and effect to ethical norms and that address and aim to reduce risks identified by the company as part of its risk assessment process. This statement makes clear that the regulators will take a strong view against a company that does not have a well-thought-out and articulated set of policies and procedures, all of which are systematically reviewed and updated. Moreover, having policies written out and signed by employees provides that some consider the most vital layer of communication and act as an internal control. Together with a signed acknowledgement, these documents can serve as evidentiary support if a future issue arises. In other words, the document, document, document mantra applies just as strongly to this area of anti-corruption compliance as any other. The specific policies and procedures required for a best practices compliance program are well known and long established. According to the 2012 FCPA guidance, The risks companies should keep in mind include the nature and extent of transactions with foreign governments, including payments to foreign officials, use of third parties, gifts, travel, and entertainment expenses, charitable donations and political contributions, and facilitation payments and expediting payments. Policies help form the basis of expectation for conduct in your company. Procedures are the documents that implement these standards of conduct. The role of compliance policies is to protect companies, their stakeholders, including employees, third parties, and others in the event of a lapse. Compliance policies provide a basic set of guidelines for your employees and others to follow and should give general prescriptions and be supplemented by more specific procedures. By establishing what is and what is not acceptable to ethical and compliant behavior, a company helps mitigate the risks posed by employees who might not always make the right ethical choice. Compliance policies do not guarantee employees will make the right decisions. However, the effective implementation and enforcement of compliance policies demonstrate to the government that a company is operating professionally and ethically for the benefit of its stakeholders, its employees, and the community it serves. There are five general elements to a compliance policy which should stake out the following. Identify who the compliance policy applies to, Set out the objective of the compliance policy. Describe why the compliance policy is required. Outline both examples of acceptable and unacceptable behavior under the compliance policy. And lay out the specific consequences for failure to comply with the compliance policy. The 2019 guidance went further by requiring an assessment whether a company has established policies and procedures that incorporate the culture of compliance into its day-to-day operations through a design which is appropriate to the organization based on the organization's assessed risks. What is the company's process for designing and implementing new policies and procedures? And has that process been changed over time? What has been involved in the design of the policies and procedures? Have the business units been consulted prior to rolling them out? Comprehensiveness. What efforts has the company made to monitor and implement policies and procedures that reflect and deal with the spectrum of risks that the company faces, including changes to legal and regulatory landscape? The 2019 evaluation mandated that there must be communication of your compliance policies and procedures throughout the workforce and relevant stakeholders, such as third-party business venture partners. The following questions were posed. Accessibility. How has the company communicated its policies and procedures to all relevant third parties and employees? Has, <clears throat> if the company has foreign subsidiaries, are there linguistic or other barriers to foreign employees' access? Responsibility for operational integration. Who has been responsible for integrating policies and procedures? Have they been rolled out in a way that ensures employees' understandings of the policies? In what specific ways are compliance policies and procedures reinforced throughout the company's internal control systems? 
This means that it's more than simply having appropriate policies and procedures. They must be operationalized into your compliance program down to the business unit level. How can you do so? Compliance training is only one type of communication. This is a key element for compliance practitioners because if you have a 30,000 plus global workforce, simply the logistics of training can be daunting. Training in small groups where detailed questions about policies can be raised and discussed can be a powerful teaching tool. Another tool or technique can be frequently asked questions on common areas and can be rendered virtually. The 2012 FCPA guidance ends its sections on policies with the following. Regardless of the specific policies and procedures implemented, these standards should apply to all personnel at all levels of the company. It is important that compliance policies and procedures are fairly and consistently applied throughout the organization. Institutional fairness demands that if a compliance policies and procedures are not applied consistently, there is a greater chance that an employee dismissed for breaching a policy could successfully claim he or she was terminated unfairly. Moreover, the inconsistent application of your policies and procedures will destroy the credibility of your compliance program. This last point cannot be overemphasized. If an employee is going to be terminated for fudging their expense accounts in Brazil, you would best make sure that the same conduct lands your top producer in the United States with the same quality of discipline. So what are the three key takeaways from policies and procedures? Well, the policies and procedures, and of course the code of conduct, when taken together, form the very backbone of your compliance program. Number two, The DOJ and SEC expect a well-thought-out and articulated set of compliance policies and procedures communicated throughout the workforce in a manner which the workforce will understand. Number three, institutional fairness for the application of policies and procedures demands consistent application of policies and procedures across the globe. So if you fire people in Brazil you got a fire in the United States for the same or similar conduct. Hope you've enjoyed day seven of 31 days to a more effective compliance program. And I hope you'll join me tomorrow for day eight to 31 days to a more effective compliance program. 31 days to a more effective compliance program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.